So for those that um, know anything about the transition movement, we are a movement of communities that are reimagining and rebuilding our world. Um, we believe that what individuals do is important and what government does is important. But what happens in between in the community is where we come in. So I'd like to go right back to the um, climate emergency declaration that was signed by uh, or declared by the, the town council last year. And that was the start of, 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 of the, the community conversation. Um, out of the declaration, um, we, what we got was a town meeting and that was it. We decided um, that we weren't going to go for uh, or we weren't going to try to get the council to, to, to set a carbon target because I don't actually think that's applicable for a, a town of our size. And what we wanted out of that was a town meeting and that is exactly what we got. At the night of the decoration, there were around 50 or 60 people and, and there was a real energy there which I've not felt in this town before. Um, and, it, and it was, it was, it was, um, it was quite moving actually to see so many people who cared so much about their community coming together and, 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 and coming away and feeling like we've made progress with, with our town council. So once we got the town meeting, we, we, we got on to working and designing what that town meeting would look like. I think it was fair to say that the town council had an image in their head of what a meeting looked like. And we started to form an idea of what we thought a town meeting looked like. And I think it's fair to say that, that, that our visions weren't quite the same. Um, what we decided was that we were trying we wanted to, 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 to open up, to facilitate and open up a space where we as a community could come together on the same level um, and we could talk about what we needed to do um, to, to, to try and strengthen the town, to try and make the town more resilient and to make the town a, um, a better place to be, um, a town that was future proof. So, there's an argument that climate breakdown is a failure of the imagination. It's a failure to imagine what could come next. We, we've, we, 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 in our, in our, um, in our industrial society, in our post-industrial society, we've kind of got stuck a little bit. Um, and and it's important if if we're going to move to something new that we can imagine what that new is before we start on the road to building it. So transition is an imagination movement. It is a what if movement. What if we did things differently? What if our community came together and we started to do things that we really wanted to do? Um, and what we decided with the town meeting was, was that we, we, we needed to intentionally design a space where we could become imaginative together, a safe space where we could become creative because it's going to be creation and imagination that helps us over the next years and decades. W when we talk about imagination, what often happens is that we, we, we tend to get to meetings and, and we tend to get to get togethers and we say, we've got 10 minutes to go, let's be creative. And, and it doesn't work like that. So you have to create a, a space that is designed solely for people to, to, to share um, the, 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 their thoughts and, and their imagination and their creativity together. So, we, we need space to play, basically. Um, and we need spaces where our imagination is allowed to flourish. And that was what we wanted to do all along. And, and that was our main aim for the day, was to create this safe space for us all to do that. In terms of what, what, our, over, our, what our bigger task is, I mean, to cut a long story short, our task is to create and build a new civilization out of the wreckage of our post-industrial world that we live in. That is what we're facing. But how do we go about doing this? The, um, the writer David Fleming says that large-scale problems do not require large-scale solutions. They require small-scale solutions within a large framework. And that is exactly what the transition network is. Lots and lots of small-scale solutions within a large transition framework. One of the main things that we need to do is to rebuild the informal economy. And what I mean by the informal economy is that 
But it's the, the informal economy is everything that we aren't paid to do. So it's 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 the bit where we're parents. It's the bit where we're friends. It's the bits where we do favors for each other. It's the bits where we play together and we talk together and we sing together and we eat together. And they're the bits that need to be rebuilt because they're the bits over the past 30 or 40 years that have been destroyed. And so our job is to, is to rebuild and strengthen that informal economy. It's a cultural challenge. It's about how we relate to each other and the world around us. The work that we will do um, will emerge. It, 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 we, we need to work with emergence rather than linearity. So what we have to do is to listen and to sit and think and talk to each other and read the patterns and then go into the details. And the community conversation was about the patterns. What was going to emerge out of that day? We didn't know. We, we, we had no idea that any kind of plan was a fallacy. So it was about listening to each other very intently and, and responding to each other. Um, you loosen the roots before you plant a tree. And the community conversation was about loosening the roots of the community. And what we, what we had to do, or what we decided to do, was that we wanted to create a new story. Um, when people question the old story, then a new story emerges. And, and the theme of the day was to, was to write, or to start to write a new story for our community and for our town. We set out at the very beginning that we wanted to create a book called New Mills 2030. And that book will become our North Star. It will become our direction of travel. And we hope that over the, the next decade or so, we hope that many of the things that are in that book will, will happen. Um, you know, transition is about hope with its sleeves rolled up. But not everything will happen. Um, other things will emerge as we come together. You know, our chemistry will, will allow new things to happen. And that is absolutely fine. It's really important that, that process happens. Um, It was important during the day as well, I thought, to, to, try and, to try and see if we could widen our circle of compassion. We, we, were we able to extend this, not just to ourselves and our friends, but to our community? Um, I talked very early on, on on the day about, could we also include the animals that live within our community, the birds, um, the horses, the sheep, the cats, the dogs, the insects? Could we extend it to the river? You know, could we extend it to our soil and could we extend it to the air around us? And that felt really important to do that, was to try and extend our circle of compassion. So when we talk about community, we talk about all that as well, because that's how we protect it, I believe. The, the community converse, I think in, in, in communities or in older communities, um, fire was a really important thing for a community. And one of the, one of the, one of the things that um, fire did was it was a focal point where communities came to chat and they came to talk and to share stories and they, they ate together and, and, and they, they planned and plotted together and they became self-aware of themselves and their community. So the community conversation was our fire. It was our place where we came. And the, the, the idea now was, would be that every year we hold a community conversation and this becomes a communal space where it is our fire and we all sit and we talk and we do this. And that would be my hope um, over the next few years that we can continue this tradition and it becomes a ritual that we can all coalesce around. Um, what we're trying to do and during the day itself, it was quite an emotional roller coaster. You know, we, we went from kind of despair and grief to hope. You know, there was probably anger mixed in there as well. And I think this is how we learn as a community. So what we're trying to do is an emotional, it's an emotional challenge. How do we engage people in our communities? It's, it's a constant challenge. It's, um, it's, it's often quite an uncomfortable dance as many of us have realized over the past week or so, and it's become really acute how difficult this can be to move community conversations and to create these new stories. Um, one of the things that we need to do, and, and the way that we designed the day of the community conversation was for us to all be within rather than above and that was really important and to constantly ask ourselves what is our story what do we want our story to be so it was important that we sat in a circle during the day itself there was no no one told anybody what to do there were no leaders on the day we just organically let the conversation happen and that was really vital if people are going to take ownership of what happens next because it's vital that 
what we talked about, the vision that we talked about, that as much as we can do, we make it happen because it was great that we all came together, but this is only the very start of it. This is the, you know, this is the very first few pages of the book that we have started to write. Um, so, the, so as we, as we all know, and as Penny has talked about, and uh, as Amy talked about, the day itself, you know, went, went incredibly well. I don't think we could, we, we could have hoped that it went any better. But what I'd like to do as I, I kind of finish up now is, is I would like to, I'd like people to think about what worked on that day and, and to take those ideas. And when we set up our action groups, to, 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 to think about what worked and, and maybe what didn't work and to take that into the groups as well. How can we come to this group on a horizontal, you know, how can we come to our community within rather than above it? We're not experts. We're not the leaders. We're, we're facilitators, I believe, in the way that we go about this work. And I think that is the, the best hope that we've got. Um, and um, the book itself, I think, is, is, is really important. I would, I'd advise anybody who's not seen it to have a read of it. Um, during the day itself, I wasn't aware that any of this was happening because as the Derbyshire Life article said, I was too busy prowling around with my little microphone. So I wasn't aware that, any, that, that, that these conversations were happening. I got little bits off it. But when I actually, I think when, when, when Sam finished, Sam Roberts finished the book, it was the first time I read it. And it was incredibly moving to see, you know, and I was incredibly proud of what we did that day. So nothing can take away what happened on that day. But um, I think as everyone is aware, it's about what we do next. Um, and again, I, I mentioned, you know, we don't have to complete all of these tasks. If we, if, to be honest, if we, if, we, if we repeated the exercise post COVID, I would imagine a lot of the results would be quite different. I imagine if we, re if we repeat the, the conversation next year, I would hope that, again, the results are slightly different than they are. I would expect them to be so. But, you know, I think the book stands as it is, and it stands as, as our North Star, as I mentioned earlier on, and hopefully we can do justice to, to, to the imaginations and the creativity that, that, that kind of were born out of that day itself. You're on Thanks. mute, Kelly. <laughs> Thank Thanks, Bill. <you>. Uh, <laughs> and Ellie managed to do it. There we are, right at the end. Brilliant. So uh, thanks ever so much for that um, uh, uh, summary of what, uh, what what happened on the day and, and, and kind of where it where it all came from and, and what you know, what we can look to do in the future. And uh, as hopefully you've seen from from this, uh, the the slides that I was showing during uh, uh, Phil talking. Uh, the the um, uh, the afternoon session um, allowed people to go into smaller groups in order to uh, discuss um, a number of themes that had emerged through the day. Uh, so that those themes weren't chosen by us; they were they emerged from what people wanted to to talk about, and what they wanted to um, uh, what was important for them, and what and, and what they wanted to uh, discuss, uh, and um, what. I'm going to do now is, uh, is to pass on to uh, people that were either in those groups or, or since uh, that time have, have started working in, in, the, in the theme groups um, uh, that emerge from the community conversation and uh, uh, that we've um, uh, now been um, moving forward uh, after that and have been in the book. So uh, I'm going to pass over to Helen uh, now to talk about uh, the local economy theme um, uh, that uh, emerged from the day. Hello. Okay, thank you. Um, Amy and I went around and looked at all of the little post-its with the questions on them and tried to put things into themes and to give them names and titles, which was quite tricky. Um, I ended up in a group which we thought would be called the local economy group. Um, there weren't many of us in there, but it was such a exciting conversation it was so, so um yeah motivating that i was really keen to carry on facilitating that group and bringing everyone together to, to do something about it so this is just a summary of some of the things we'd spoken about there's a limit to what can go on on one slide um it was quite wide ranging but when I look at this now, I'm quite surprised actually, re-looking it, I haven't looked at it for a month or so, because it felt as if everything had changed once we got together and we only started to create a local economy group in mid-May. Um, 
and I thought it would look very different but actually I feel as if we are still working towards this. I managed to get a group of stars together which I was really pleased with. We had to meet just on Zoom um, we had to use uh, comms through WhatsApp and through um, uh, Facebook um, and just got together and had a chat as with the summary there as a stimulus. But what we did feel that post COVID, it was really going to be important to get an economy through the next year. Um, the great ideas about having you know, reuse and acquire schemes and having even an eco destination would only work if actually we had a town centre in the first place. And if it had, dis if post COVID it had collapsed, um, we would have nothing. So really that is our focus. That is our focus is to try and get the businesses through the next year. So we called ourselves New Mills 2021. We gave ourselves the tagline of bounce forward, not step back. But we've just seemed to have referred to ourselves as bounce forward now quite like that i think just the bounce forward group so this is not bounce back it's not build back it's bouncing it's bouncing it's going forward it's moving forward through um regenerating new mills in the post-covid world um with our wonderful symbol there which is a symbol of regeneration which um i just put out a little plea does anyone have a picture of a butterfly and arthur a wonderful artist Arthur pinged it to us and we've had it ever since I'm really quite pleased with it um, it seemed that the scope of the local economy was going to be huge um, and one of the stars who's going to talk later on is Esther of course who is a who is a you know, who is Mrs Food um, I, don't, I hope you don't mind me saying that Esther uh, so at the moment we feel as if we've actually incorporated food and farming in there as well we're expecting it to branch out but as phil said we're we're emerging we didn't really know how it was all going to work we still don't really know how it's going to work i think we're, we feel as if we're um coming together and understanding our aim a little bit more so people in the group what is really wonderful and this is something i know that one of our um group members lynn is really pushing for is that we have a wide representative representation from the community groups um, as amy had said this isn't about transition this could happen without town center it's about people and if we can get everybody on board and not feel it's just something that a few of us are trying to push that would be really great one of the things we have got in our group is esther who is doing some work on place management um, and this is a whole new world for me. So we're not doing this all on our own. There is a body of knowledge and a body of work and people working crazily over the, throughout the country, just working on how we can rebuild high streets. And there's some fantastic ideas coming out of it. It links also with reduced reduction of traffic. It does link also with um, just environmental benefits of COVID. But um, what we really needed to do is get a good picture of what what the businesses need, what the residents want. Good picture of how everybody sees new meals and not just the narrow focus that we might have. So this also ties in with um, Esther's research work that she's doing. It's all fitted in rather nicely. Um, so we've got a resident survey, which hopefully many of you have uh, already filled out. We also have a business survey, really to, to, to determine what those next steps should be. And that's quite exciting because it's only from that data that comes in that we can really look at that and decide where the priorities are and where we're going to be most effective. But I feel as if we have had some wins already for a start group. So we've got representat representatives from... Um, um, New Mills Festival, we've got representatives from Visit New Mills, from the Food Hub, from uh, Lizzie Pick Party, um, and just a wonderful range of people. So with huge number, huge amount of skills, I can't tell you how much I've learned already. We've got Jane with her IT skills as well. We've got our icon, which um, I really like the idea of this being about regeneration and about butterfly and about maybe the new butterfly could become a New Mills thing. We have also got fantastic businesses. It's been a complete thrill, it's been a complete pleasure meeting business people, meeting 
you know, the butcher meeting Geo, meeting Ali from the news agents and just chatting about their experiences over lockdown, um, their challenges, um, and just listening to, I'm on the WhatsApp group for the local businesses in the high street, and just listening to them coming up with ideas of how they can, you know, get together and promote themselves. It's, it's really wonderful. So somebody mentioned there, I think Phil mentioned, about the energy that came out of um, the community conversation. And it does feel as if there is an energy um, and it's just making the most of it and harnessing it. Um, so that's a, that's a win and talking to the businesses, walking the pavement, everyone knows Esther anyway, but um, it's just been a real thrill. Um, it's been good to be able to meet with High Peak Barrow Council representatives. Um, the Regeneration Office is very keen to work with us. We are intending to formalise that relationship with them with a memor memorandum of understanding, um, which really says that they're going to listen to us, they're going to promise to meet us, they're going to work with us in things that we want to do. Um, so yeah, the other win, of course, is the survey, great online surveys with Google Forms. It's been really something having to do things uh, virtually. There's people in the group that I've never met. <laughs> I, might, I might speak to them on WhatsApp and Facebook every day, but I've never met them, um, which is interesting. So that is a real win as well. It's been fascinating, actually. Really enjoyed just working on the Google Forms. It was a lot of work, but it's, it's um, yeah, a very rewarding. We have, from this afternoon, there were 280 responders on the resident survey and you can see the data already it's anonymized but you can it's already creating wonderful pie charts and things it's really interesting um i'm a bit geeky when it comes to the data i'm going to look forward to looking through it all um and also the support we have had business people just saying thank you so much for what you're doing and that's been energizing in itself um yeah, energising in itself and, and, and giving everybody a bit more energy to reimagine re things and imagine where we can go from here. So that's where we are. Um, it's been you know, really exciting. It's emerged. Who knew what was going to come out of the community conversation? And um, yeah, I'm really pleased, proud of my little group. But uh, yeah, we've done what we have in what know, it's barely a month um join us <laughs> thank you oh, brilliant thank you so much Helen. that's it's really really exciting to to see how much you've you've done in this short space of time and given the changes that happened so quickly after the community conversation i think uh, it's just it's just brilliant to see and i absolutely love the butterfly i think just, I just want to see them everywhere. So I think we should start uh, start putting them everywhere around New Mills. That'd be absolutely great. Um, right. Well, we'd be time to talk in a bit more or detail to, to Helen about that after after we've uh, went through uh, the other themes. So I will move on. Uh, so uh, and invite Julian, uh, please, to talk about uh, the Nature Group. Um, okay. You are mute, Julian. I'll start again. That was so good as well. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, yes, we, we had a, a very vibrant discussion at the Community Conversation event. Um, there were a lot of very uh, committed people and a lot of knowledge around the table. And it's, it was clearly a topic that was close to the heart of, uh, of a lot of people. And we realized that um, in New Mills, we already had a lot of natural assets. Um, that's one of the reasons that people like to live here and they clearly value it. Um, and there's a lot that we want to keep and, and look after. Uh, there's the Tors, there's Mousley Bottom, um, the rivers and even our gardens. But there was also lots of opportunity and um, various things were raised about the possibility of improving the impact of new developments. Um, in terms of, of, of biodiversity or changing land management practices, whether it's the council annoying verges or 
uh, farming practices or indeed again what we do in our own gardens and there's lots of opportunities for community activities to get involved and cultivate a, a, a wider and deeper connection with nature. Um, recent months I think have demonstrated just how important nature is to so many people and that's cropped up in loads of conversations that I've had. I think we've all had more time to take notice of nature and we've all received some solace and, and inspiration from it um, when we've been locked down. Uh, at the event we also recognise that we need a, a significant re-evaluation really, a, a re-evaluation of what the countryside should and could look like, um, a re-evaluation of what conservation is, um, of how we manage things and also of the value of different habitats. Um, after the after the conversation, um, interested people who uh, we knew about uh, have got together afterwards to discuss the implications of, the, of what we talked about and how we could take that further. So we've had um, a couple of Zoom meetings and there's also quite a lively WhatsApp group being set up. So if you want to be part of this ongoing conversation, then if you just email uh, Transition New Mills or leave your details in the chat or something, then um, We'll, we'll get you looped into that. But our, our discussions have centred on two main um, areas. So one is uh, public engagement and promotion. Um, this is being led by Chris Moore, who is also here tonight. Um, and that side of things is looking at, in particular, what we can contribute to the Numerals Festival in September. So ideas that have been mooted so far involve um, some nature trail leaflets and guided walks, uh, the possibility of a, a New Mills Nature website um, giving local details of different habitats and featuring garden rewildings. Um, we could have a, a, a how to rewild your garden webinar Q&A with a panel where people who are interested in making changes to their, their immediate uh, vicinity can, can ask how, how best to do that and indeed trying to coordinate groups of neighbours doing things together. Um, it's planned to have a, a, a tree planting event or, or planting tree seeds rather um, on the prom and uh, to run an online questionnaire just to get a greater understanding of public attitudes uh, about nature and how people interact with it. The other side of things um, is looking at a nature recovery plan um, I'm the main contact for that. That's a, a sort of strategic approach um, to planning for nature uh, and it involves working with the councils, the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust, uh, landowners, and, uh, landowners and, and land managers and the community and really using local knowledge and skills and getting public participation in such a plan. Now uh, if the Environment Bill is passed in its current form, then councils will have uh, an obligation to produce a nature recovery strategy. So we, um, and they need uh, community involvement in that, so we could be part of that. Um, but even if it's not, I think it's a worthwhile exercise for us to, to try and start um, shaping how we react to uh, planning for nature. So it will help the community and local government identify and prioritize what are the best measure, measures to take for biodiversity at different locations? Um, it will open up conversations with different organisations, different players, so that they, they can improve uh, their, their practices. And we've already made a really good start with one of our members, Richard Barnes, has produced a, a quite amazing GIS uh, map of, of woodland and different habitats. Um, so that that will. That's a, a real cornerstone of any sort of um, recovery plan. And we're currently making contact with, uh, with all the local authorities in the area to try and build up our understanding of, of who the different stakeholders are in this area. So there's lots going on and it's, um, yeah, with it being spring as well, it's a particularly exciting time in this, in this area. So anybody who wants to come and join in this, please do come forward and let us know. Thank you. Cheers, Julian. That's 
that's that's it. And I, yeah, I'm like, uh, like Jane says, I encourage anybody that's that's interested in that to, to um, get in touch and get, and get on the WhatsApp group or, or email list or just make yourself known. Um, great. So I'm going to pass on to uh, to Liz now, uh, who's going to uh, give us a rundown of what happened uh, in the the waste theme and uh, what's happening uh, since uh, since the, com the conversation. Uh, unmute yourself, Liz. Can you do it? <laughs> Still not unmuted, I'm afraid. I haven't accidentally muted everybody, have I? <laughs> can I just check with somebody else? I'm just actually I'm going to pass on to see if I can ask Sue to do it. Denise, host, you might be able to unmute her. I'm trying. I, yeah. Uh, I'm asking, I'm doing ask to unmute, but it's uh, just unmuted myself, so maybe give her some guidance how to do it. I think she's on a phone, so if anybody knows how to do I, it on a phone. I, I'm on a phone, I'm on a phone, I think she's I'm on a phone as well. But if you go, if she goes into the bottom corner and just scrolls up on the screen, a little, a little menu will appear. And right on the left hand side, it should say mute. Yeah, I'm quite sure why it's everybody. No, she's dropped out altogether. She's obviously had connection problems. I think. Uh, right. Can I? Uh, oh, no, Jane. She's there, Liz. Oh, is she there? Jane, would you mind? Would you, do you mind? Oh, maybe she's back. Sorry about this, everybody. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I'm sorry. The screen froze about ten minutes ago. I haven't been able to move it or do anything at all. Suddenly, it's woken up in time. Um, right, I'm very sorry about that. Um, anybody who knows me will know I'm the tech pillar of the group. Um, things happen to me that don't happen to other people. Never mind. Um, so I'm Liz Longton and I have been um, running with Jane Eyre's the um, Rethink Classic High Peak for a few years. Um, and uh, so obviously I've developed quite an interest, quite a, a background knowledge in, in plastic and the problem with it. So um, what we have done <clears throat> is basically just moved the um, Rethink Plastic into Rethink Waste in terms of a Facebook group. <clears throat> and we did that because we thought, well, we've got a fairly good ready-made audience there. Um, so that was fairly easy. And we've started a WhatsApp group to start discussions and planning about what else we can do. And that group is growing slowly. I think we've got about people in there now. So not huge, like the two groups you've heard about, but waste is not a very engaging subject, is it? Um, it, oh, it, <laughs> it it's kind of oh, but never mind. Um, there's things we can move, we can do. So um, so far, what have we been doing? Um, well, I've just kind of done a rough list of of, of the things we've done that are new. Um, so we've done some research into things that have been difficult for ages um, and um, so uh, this came from a new member is what sort of poo bags should we be using for our dogs so mm. that's in touch with the council um, and we have had a, a response to that and basically it's not what you would think um, and this is the problem with a lot of waste issues it's counterintuitive the answer is not what you would think. So basically you have a dog and you are scooping its poo into a bag, unless you are going to actually compost it in your own home composter, you need to use ordinary plastic. And the reason you need to use ordinary plastic is because our landfill waste is currently going to landfill. And if you use biodegradable plastic, whatever that actually means, it's going to um, cause methane. So that's something we've actually found out. That is the council's advice. Um, and we found that out in the last week. So <clears throat> we are, are looking at um, now re-engaging with the council. Um, 
over a period of months, I guess, um, and that might help us in uh, over the longer term to deal with issues like more recycling bins, better recycling for companies, organisations that you can see were um, part of the summaries that were created at the conversation. I do have a slight disadvantage is I wasn't at the conversation because I was somewhere else learning how to make an eco brick. Um, which was probably a bad decision, but I got stuck with it. So there you go. Um, we are also looking at how we can re-engage with schools. And one thing I'm really interested in um, is because I'm a retired dinner lady is looking at food waste in schools. Um, there's lots of ways that you could look at that. The, the huge one would be a way to recycle the waste that schools produce at the end of the day. And I'm thinking really big and longer term, would it be possible for schools to have actual recycling on site to make their own compost or compost that they could pass on to the community? And there is a way to do that. It's called a rocket composter. They are expensive, but, you know, um, looking at a long term plan, but also looking at the way we serve food to our children. <clears throat> uh, and I know you would want to say, for instance, well, you've got to give children vegetables. Well, in my experience, if you give a child something that they don't want to eat <clears throat> on their school dinner plate, you will be scraping it away 20 minutes later because, it, you know, you get 30 seconds to serve a child and it's just not the right way to <clears throat> get your children to eat vegetables. And I'm just wondering how people would feel about children being able to opt out of that or about children being able to choose to have a small portion. So those are issues. Um, at the minute, they're still just in my head. Um, but connecting with schools, I don't know if Lindsay is here, um, but she is one of the teachers up at Newtown that's been helping us with the TerraCycle thing. <clears throat> and she is quite interested in looking at, at food waste as well. Um, so we haven't started that work yet, but um, we're having to think about it. Um, we're also thinking about, um, uh, and this has happened in the last couple of days, how we um, buy and discard clothing in new mills. So maybe we need some surveys doing but in the short term, we have uh, found that there's quite a bit of interest in sewing for repairing clothes, revamping clothes, updating clothes. And I think I had the same idea as Sue Cooper did um, to have a fashion show with revamped clothes. And wouldn't that be quite a bit of fun? Just to show that you don't need to chuck your clothes away when you're bored with them. You can do something else. <clears throat> Another thing that we're thinking about is the TerraCycle project, with Pe which Penny started a couple of years ago. <clears throat> and this has been so successful that it has actually become too successful. Um, and the amount of collection, collected rubbish was becoming difficult to sort and manage. Um, so we're looking at ways we can do that differently, maybe give it back to the retailers, ask them to sort and collect it and, and send it off. Again, we've just begun talking about that, no action taken as yet. And then of course, you have to remember that the problem with plastic hasn't gone away. So I read a post on uh, Facebook today that someone's been shooting plastic pellets down in Mousley Wood and there's an area of woodland that is scattered with hundreds of tiny little plastic pellets. And I find that really quite sad in view of all the publicity and everything that there has been about plastic. Um, you know, but so again, still lots of work to do there. Um, I think that's it about uh, waste at the minute. Looking though at the summary, uh, which you've got on your screen, I can see connections there <coughs> with the community group which if I can keep my voice, I'm talking about next. Um, so like the zero waste shop, um, libraries of things so people can share and loan equipment, um, repair businesses and cafes, all these things um, could be connected to the community uh, group, which I am talking about next. 
be brilliant if anybody else wanted to join in our waste whatsapp group or um have a look at our facebook page and see if there's any comments they wanted to make um uh, i think that's about it about waste thank you thanks Liz. great so well we've yes we've got the community um uh summary up next so if, if you're okay unless you want to break and i can come back to you come back to me i'm going to get a drink quick okay okay in that case what's next transport uh so if i could ask sue um if possible to unmute hi everyone um i'm sue i was part of the transport discussion group uh, unfortunately i haven't got anything exciting to report has happened since because there's been no follow-on group um i joined this group out of interest but my my passion is with transitions incredible adult group but lots of interesting things so the vision for the future in terms of transport was that new mills should be quieter, cleaner, safer, um, a good place for, for children to grow up, less traffic, fewer cars parked, um, cleaner air, all those usual sorts of things. There were some ideas that came up about what people could do as individuals, a lot of which we thought probably needed more education. So um, ensuring that everybody understood how easy it was to catch a bus from New Mills around to different places. Um, the, the community bus that goes around locally, to have leaflets in every household about that on a regular basis, that sort of thing, to encourage use of public transport. But also things like more people joining micro car clubs. Um, I've got experience of that. A neighbour and I now share what was my car with support from Sustainable Hayfield and the transport scheme that's going there. With, we have people who were employed to look at transport issues. And one of the big things they talked about was um, not jumping onto bandwagon ideas without being really clear about possible unforetold outcomes so to make sure there was um, expertise from behavioral scientists uh, easy to say let's stop all the cars going through the town center but you need to know what you want your outcome to be because there may be an outcome that's that's different or very negative to that. Um, interestingly we thought that um, there would be less transport if local businesses developed um, ideas like the borough to um, reduce business rates or startup schemes, uh, but make sure that people who owned business properties, offices, or shops had to pay their rates even when the properties were empty, so that they didn't leave them sitting empty for long periods of time. Um, uh, I think it felt like that there, there were sort of two prongs, I think a bit of, as Phil was saying, lots of things that we could encourage individuals, individuals to do to reduce their car use, um, but also big political things that needed to be done uh, with planning across the high peak and um, discussions with transport for Greater Manchester. So, no subgroup to move any of this forward, particularly in High Peak, if there's anybody out there. I think you probably get enough interest from members of the community. Uh, but sadly, I'm afraid, a short summary of the discussion, but with nothing to um, pass on as what's happened into the future. Hopefully, there's somebody there who's got the passion and the expertise, um, or just the expertise, just the passion and can find the expertise to move some of these ideas forward. Thanks, Penny. Thanks. Thank you ever so much, Sarah. I really appreciate that. So, yeah, uh, we, yeah, that, that that group is there to be to be populated. Uh, and Sarah Rowe, who was uh, the provocateur on the community conversation about transport works for Sus Trans, and is interested in this area, is is still keen to try and work in this area. So she's somebody that. Uh, you, 
you can get in touch with um, or get in touch with us and I can I can put you in touch uh, if you would like to to work in this area she's quite keen to set up a survey to um, to get some feedback from the community about uh, what they feel about um, moving forward with transport uh, issues um, in new mills so um, again we can talk about that uh, in a little while so I think what I'll do uh, give Liz a little bit more time uh, we'll move on to uh, food and farming if Esther's there to talk um, that would be good uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Hi, um, my name is Esther Morrison, and I am the sort of the food and farming lead. Uh, but we've combined food and farming with the local economy group because you can't really separate one from the other. Uh, a healthy agricultural industry is necessary for a local, uh, healthy local food economy. Um, growing our own stuff locally means that we can improve the quality and availability of food for people who currently are relying on the food bank and work of charities and individuals who've been looking after them, particularly during COVID. Um, we dropped, for the, time, for the time being, we've dropped the organic emphasis in the food group in so much as we need to focus on feeding people. Um, the organic aspiration is something that will be more long term, but what we want to do really as a group um, and for the local economy is to help more people eat better. And that is not necessarily going to be organic. It's going to be the move from, bring, from eating dried foods and tin foods and to being able to, uh, to purchase and cook uh, fresh foods because that will improve the diet of the people who are in, at the moment most in need. Um, you've probably all seen all sorts of unusual delivery services started up during COVID. We had no idea really obviously at the community conversation the sorts of things that we were going to see. Um, the corner shop in Hayfield has started doing uh, delivering strawberries to people's doors Potsies are moving a little bit with times and they're getting deliveries out to people. So the other bakeries, uh, ballet bakeries are now doing all sorts of stuff and have just employed a new Spanish pastry chef. For those of you who like their food, uh, Manuela comes with a, a CV that includes the Larry down at Salford. Um, and uh, Kate has invested in a new chill display cabinet so that we can have proper pastries. Um, there are so many things that we could do and there are but there's so many things that we want but at the moment we are as, as somebody said at the community conversation we're a bit preaching to the converted in this particular catchment group in that we all believe that this is the right thing to do we all want to move forward and we're all looking at issues that affect the planet in a way that sort of meets maybe our, our educational background and our understanding of the bigger picture but a good bit of new mills doesn't match our demographic. They're the people who need the most help. Um, the sort of things that the food hub can do the most for, teaching people to have the, the skills that they need to be able to understand when they're looking at stuff that looks like it might be going off. Is it going off? How can I not waste it? How can I turn it into soup? How can I freeze it how can I work with my neighbours and batch cook stuff together so that we're all helping each other. Community growing spaces is a huge thing um, not just really in terms of us supporting ourselves but if you think about the impact of thinking about growing spaces and the impact it had in Todmorden when they moved to being a an incredible edible focus it didn't just transform the lives of everybody in that community, it also made them a tourist destination. It made the businesses in the town more viable. We've had a lot of, sort of responses on surveys and questions about wouldn't it be lovely if we had a green grocers, wouldn't it be lovely if we had X, Y and Z. In the past, in New Mills, those businesses have failed in the last few years because there hasn't been the footfall in the town centre there has been the footfall from the people who've got the money to spend on those sort of shops in the town centre. But the interesting thing about COVID and one of the um, 
key questions for me, I think that we're asking on the resident survey is how many people in our town are now shifting to at least part time home working. When I ran the um, Thursday night street food events in uh, the Butterfly House, the difference in the numbers of people who were able to come to that event on a Thursday when I shifted the closure time from half past seven to eight, nearly doubled the sales of the street food traders. So that meant there was a whole group of people who weren't back in our town anywhere near when the shops were open, which left them with only the weekends where they could possibly spend money in the town Anybody with children knows how difficult Saturdays are. And most of our shops are closed on Sunday, which is the day having run events in numerous towns over the last 10, 15 years. Sunday is the day that most people have more time free and are willing to invest in actually making a commitment to something other than an hour in any one location. But that's a a long way in some ways down the line when we're looking at food in new mills we have a huge amount of potential if we look at cooperation both in the terms of the actual cooperative movement but also working together there's a big demand for a zero waste shop but we at the moment have in the past we've worded that in terms of what we would see as a as a local replacement maybe for the unicorn in Chalton rather than actually looking at something that's more how I would describe the old scoop and save shops in the likes of Stockport, which appeal to a far broader demographic. The quality of the, of the actual product itself is not much different, it's just how the shop is presented. And we want to reach out to everybody in New Mills and make this an inclusive food movement, not an exclusive food movement. We need to make sure that everybody's interests are designed into whatever it is that we're delivering. Um, I put a question on the Facebook public page a couple of days ago after hearing a very interesting um, presentation at a place management seminar I was at. They were talking about bread and how in France the, the price of a proper baguette, as in one that you get from a proper bread shop, uh, is capped by the government. And one of the reasons that they're not allowed to have any uh, preservatives in it is to actually encourage people to buy bread more often. It's an intrinsic part of the French diet. It is not viewed as being some absolutely dreadful thing and it's proper bread. So it doesn't have the impact that processed bread has on your insides. Um, but from that, they then was sort of saying, well, why when we go on holiday, do we love walking to the local bakeries and getting nice goodies in the morning, but we don't seem to take the same attitude when we're at home and the wording of the question was, was it, what shop would you like to see in your town that you could walk to every day in the morning now obviously new mills is an unusual town not for around here but for demographically if you compare us to other towns in the north northwest we're really really spread out you know the, the town center is actually relatively small compared to the size of new mills and a lot of people myself included don't really live within walking distance of New Mills Town Centre. I can walk there, but if I cut shop for very much, I'd have difficulty walking back. I'd have to take the bus, which means that I'm into time everything really closely. And the responses that were got on the Facebook post, the most popular was the refill shop. We got seven votes for that. The second most popular was um, a coffee shop and deli. And this was um, a few people when we were doing the box pop on the prom on Saturday talked about somewhere I think called Wilkes um, that used to be in New Mills somewhere I, by the sound of it somewhere near Papa Pan Pizza it might even have been Papa Pan Pizza I don't know uh, but somewhere where you could get, get a bit of everything and um, then the next one was a proper a, a proper restaurant um, and no offense is to meant to anybody on this uh, forum at the moment who might be running a, an evening food business but one thing that the hub has very definitely shown is there's a massive demographic in new mills that are not being catered for in the locality they want something different they want something varied they want somewhere where they can sit down and be comfortable and be welcome without the formality of a restaurant but we don't have anything really that's again within easy walking distance for an awful lot of people in this town um, sycamore is a beautiful place to go for, for a meal beautiful views but it's only walking distance for a very, very small number of people if they don't want to risk getting knocked over. 
Uh, the next one down was tapas bar and a beer garden. I'm with you on that one, folks. Um, and a wine bar was the next one. And the idea being obviously that we are as a community from what the, from what the surveys on the um, on Facebook and what the Google forms are showing us is that we are really missing as a town somewhere to hang out of an evening. Um, and it's, it's it's a huge potential, but we have to balance that potential in the way that we've often we found really I suppose the Bullard Gate issue that how wonderful it is to have a pedestrianised uh, market street, but realising the financial impact on the businesses of that pedestrianisation has made some people rethink the drive towards complete pedestrianisation. We have to be able to balance. So maybe a restaurant that is just a restaurant won't be viable in new builds, but maybe something where it was a shared space you know, during the day, it might be the coffee shop that people are looking for. And then in the evening, it can transfer over to something else. And I think this is something that we will be looking at as a group. Um, I'm quite lucky in, <laughs> and slightly cheating. Uh, I've been commissioned by um, a group in Glossop to deliver three online food events over the next few months. And um, which will be great because that means that we can borrow them <laughs> without having to pay for them. Um, and one of the things that we are I'm planning on for that particular uh, group of events is um, a farm to fork discussion as to having uh, a farmer who um, raises their own animals, takes them to metrics in, in Glossop, and then speaking then to a restaurant or pub that uses that meat as a as a on their menu and how we might go about promoting people who are using local produce a lot of people can't afford to and that is another issue how can we make local produce affordable to people like geo people like well, i don't want to name any naming any names but if uh, we were to introduce for instance a group purchasing scheme the quality of the meat that they will be able to purchase together will be much higher than the quality of the meat that any of them can afford to buy separately. And this is the sort of work that we can look at working together with the food businesses in New Mills to help them think local. It's not that they don't want to, but if your margins are so tight that you're having to go as far down the quality line as you can in order to be able to get turnover, then there was no attraction at all in going organic um, or going green or as Aisha said, when she sort of introduced the, um, the biodegradable packaging at um, k Kebabs, you know, she's having to charge extra for those packaging, for that packaging. And some people are paying it, some people aren't, it is a choice, but at least people understand that it, it costs more. And this is something that obviously we're gonna be looking at in the long run and looking at how, how we can all work together because that collaboration is gonna be key to get in a sustainable town centre and having food businesses where everybody wants to and can spend their money. That's it. Brilliant, thank you Esther, that's absolutely great. Yeah, thanks so much. Right, I'm gonna move on. I think I'll move on to Amy um, now to talk about energy and then we'll, we'll um, whiz back to Liz uh, for the last one. Oh, did you unmute me? That was clever. Did you oh. do that? <clears throat> anyway, um, right. Well, I'm glad, uh, Sue, that our, our group's not the only one that hasn't actually formed a group off the back of the discussion. Um, yeah, it's very similar to, to what Sue said about the transport. We had a lot of ideas. Um, in some ways, I felt like we, well, everyone was incredibly enthusiastic but as soon as a question came along that was like what doesn't serve us anymore uh it was we, we had to keep reining it back to energy like come back to come back to the topic because we were just <clears throat> going all over the place which was great um so the, the main themes that came out of it uh there was a real interest in local energy production um and uh, in particular ways in which homes could make or store their own energy, like really small scale energy production. Um, again, this isn't my area of expertise at all. So if there's people listening in um, with, with knowledge and expertise, then um, we should definitely collaborate at some point. 
Um, we were talking about electric vehicles and innovative practice around electric vehicles. Um, so uh, you can do some very dynamic things now with um, with an electric car and a charge point. If you have solar panels, you can store your energy within a car's battery and then draw it out again for household use. Um, so there's obviously a lot of potential, um, but not necessarily a lot of expertise within our group as to how we might support that. Uh, community owned energy generation was another big theme, uh, talking about biomass and also this uh, real need for an overall shift in mentality not just about how we make our energy but how we use our energy and the need for this overall powering down um, of our homes and of our businesses and of our of our general energy consumption um, there was also some really good chat um, actually we were surprised the direction it took us um, around the the library of things and this kind of community pulling together to share resources uh, we have this real acknowledgement that every new thing we purchase comes with this embedded cost of energy just to make it. So we weren't, you know, not even just kind of the community energy use, but almost like embedded carbon, like what energy we'll be bringing into the community by buying and buying and consuming and consuming. Um, and that was really interesting. Um, and listening to everybody else talk, it's quite, it's quite nice to be near the end because everything links together so much and uh i think phil did quote on the day this uh this thing about connections about bringing in this idea of connection and and all these different areas working together to not just to have these separate like all oh, the economy and energy and transport but actually just to have this rolling ball of developing solutions um, and I feel like a lot of the things we talked about in energy fit into so much of what other people have said as well. Um, but yeah, aside from hide, highlighting those themes, um, there's just, yeah, there's, there's not a lot else to say. Um, if anybody does have a particular interest or, or expertise around energy, then please do make your voice heard or if you know somebody else, them onto the transition page and just get them to to pipe up because again so much enthusiasm um i don't think you'd struggle to find a friend um but yeah that's about it really brilliant yeah amy thanks yes like you say i think we're just it's a case of getting the ball rolling and um and linking things because i think there's quite it seems to be quite good links here with the, some of the transport themes as well which we're looking for people to, to jump on board Definitely. with so um i, I think uh, Anyway, we can open it up. So the, the last, the last um, uh, theme that we uh, are going to cover uh, right before we open up the discussion is um, Liz. Let me just move back to the community theme. So if I can ask Liz uh, to unmute, oh, we're not going to have another problem again with unmuting, are we? <laughs> um, you're still muted, Liz. Is she there? I'm Hello? here. Hey, excellent. All right, brilliant. Okay, uh, so if you could just talk about uh, what was called mindsets on the day, but has evolved a little bit since then. Thanks, Liz. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, as I said before, I didn't actually get to the conversation. I think I'm going to regret that for many years to come. Um, and I kind of put myself into mindset because I'm really, really interested in how we reach people that we don't usually reach. Um, and then when I actually saw um what was listed i saw it was about much more than just mindsets and what we've actually got is a, a huge wish, li wish list of brilliant things that would allow us to bring all the themes together or a lot of the themes together if we could make them happen <coughs> and i at the minute i've still got a very small group looking at this uh, i think there's just six of us at the minute um and we uh, at the minute, we are just investigating what you would need to have a community hub. Um, and um, it, is a, it, it, it is a really, really big task just to have the right, uh, uh, somewhere approximating the right amount of money. Um, if you were just to have, for a brief period, say, of a year, 
the rent of a town centre shop, say something the size of the empty Oxfam shop, um, you might have to find a thousand pounds worth of rent just per, per month just for the shop. And then you add in all the equipment you might need, the insurance you might need, <coughs> any staff you might need. Um, so you are talking a lot of money. Um, so we are also beginning to investigate what grants might be available. But I think we really do have to look at that as a very long term project. It would be even better if it could be somewhere we could purchase and the community owned. So uh, again, we are looking at what community owned actually means. What is the legality of that? Um, I would have thought if um, uh, there has to be some sort of entity that owns property. So we're looking at all those sort of issues. Um, but looking at the rest of the stuff that's on the list, there is, uh, again, uh, issues like getting a police station back, getting the shore start back, um, school crossing patrols, which means perhaps lots of surveys about whether or not the wider town people want this um, and how much support they would give it, and then lots and lots of negotiation with councils. Um, and I suspect if we were to investigate all that um, closely, we would discover that it's lots of different levels of council that are responsible for the funding for all those different things. I am particularly interested in the thing that says no more health, uh, mental health stigma. <clears throat> now, as somebody who's had mental health problems and still has them to some extent, I am really interested in that because I think um, having a wonky mental health from time to time really shakes your self-image. And although any stigma <clears throat> I have suffered, I have probably given to myself, I am now very confident to talk about having mental health problems and not be in any way ashamed of it. But whoever put that point in, presumably was aware of some, and I would love to find out more about that um, and what our experiences in the town and I'm particularly thinking about young people and uh, about men. There is this idea, um, I think, that men have more of a problem with mental health because they don't talk to each other. Um, I don't know how true that is, whether or not it's a um, apocryphal story, but I'd love to hear about that. I'm also really, really interested in the idea of a strong youth voice because ever since I joined Transition and started thinking deeply about the issues that we face, I am convinced that getting young people motivated and on the side of change is the key to making it succeed. And I would love sometime in the future to repeat the community conversation just for our young people <clears throat> to find out what they want in their town and what they want to have when they are young working adults. Um, so perhaps through the school, that would be brilliant, a bit of a captive audience. I don't know. Again, all these issues are long-term aims at the minute. Um, um, what I really, really need is more people in my group to help um, because this is, this is too big a lift for six people. So if I went away with three more people, I would be so happy tonight about that. Um, there is a WhatsApp group. I'm sure Jane would share the link if um, I ask her nicely. I've done it. Thank you. Um, well, I'm just sharing all the links. There's some, uh, some more links there for the other groups as well on, on the, uh, on the right. page I just <clears throat> shared as well. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, um, but again, I, I thought when I, when I looked at uh, uh, the... Uh, the list uh, of stuff that have gone on to the the, the the summary, the wish list, I thought community, this is the one that pulls everything together, that gets everybody in there. <clears throat> and I think there's some things on there that will engage those people that we don't usually engage. Um, so uh, Goit Valley House, saving Goit Valley House for the immediate future raised an enormous amount of support um, but the sixth form back, that'd be good. Um, you know, the, the lollipop ladies at all the schools back. Um, yeah, all that sort of thing might engage the people that we don't usually we don't usually hear from. Um, so I'm sorry that is a little bit vague, but we are just starting work, and there is only a few others, so there is lots that could be done there. 
Brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. Yeah, I, I genuinely think that 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 whole thing it, it does cover span so much of the other stuff that's happening within within that came out of the community conversation. And I think the idea of a community hub really came um, came uh, through in in lots of the different themes. So I, I think that's something that I, I definitely want to get behind and and help and bring to fruition. And I'm sure there'll be other people will as well. Um, so that's that's it from everybody that's that's talking. I think um, I, I was going to ask Phil if he's got any uh, just final words to 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 sum up. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add, Phil? On mute. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. It's just um, it's been really good listening to everybody. It's been really interesting. Um, you know, there's so much to to try and keep on top of. And um, the quote that Amy mentioned was, um, it was from Wendell Berry. And um, it was, um, it, he said that only by restoring the broken connections can we be healed. That connection is health. What our society does its best to disguise from us is how ordinary, how commonly attainable health is. We lose our health by failing to see the direct connections between living and eating, eating and working and working and loving. And I think Amy's absolutely right to, 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 to kind of tease it out of what we did. Um, we, we've got some really big questions to answer over the next years and decades, such as how do we feed ourselves? How do we provide energy for ourselves? How do we reimagine our economy? And, and, and more importantly, how do we create local jobs out of this? How can people make a living out of this? Um, I, I kind of think that if we put our mental health and well-being, um, oh, sorry, what if we put our mental health and well-being at the very centre of everything that we do, so that our lives become um, rich with possibility, um, full of imaginative thoughts, we become more open to ideas, we become less anxious about the world around us. And I think that, that to a certain degree, COVID has given us a glimpse of what this future could be. Um, potentially a quieter, more reflective, more thoughtful, community-minded future. It's been mentioned about um, um, setting up a, a, a hub within New Mills. Um, one of the plans that we, we kind of originally had when we got the declaration signed with the council and then set up the community conversation, whether it, it would eventually lead to something that we refer to as an office of imagination within New Mills. Um, and this is a place where people can meet and talk about ideas, um, create the connections that Wendell Berry talks about and um, just kind of finally in terms of the whole imagination thing I just want to quote Rob Hopkins um, and he said um, it's like when Neil Armstrong went to the moon it wasn't Armstrong's idea to go to the moon it wasn't JFK's idea to go to the moon because we've been going to the moon for decades Jules Verne went to the moon Tintin went to the moon Frank Sinatra went to the moon. We went to the moon in stories, films, comic books, and all sorts. So by the time we actually went there, we'd been there hundreds and hundreds of times in stories. It created such a deep longing that it became almost inevitable that we would go to the moon. For me, that longing is fundamental to it. How do we create a longing for a low carbon, more biodiverse, socially just world? It's not with statistics or dry policy documents. You create longing with songs, with stories, with poetry, art, films, and drama. And that is the starting point. Once you create longing, you're in a completely different space. And just finally to sum up kind of my thoughts on this, I think at the community conversation, that was our first step to creating longing for that future. And and we need to build upon that now. And we, we need to create a longing so great that we have no choice but to create it. And that is what the community conversation to me was about. And everything that I've heard tonight is about creating that longing so that we have to create this future. We have no choice but to do it. Um, it's a, going to be a difficult process. But I think we've got off to a cracking start. But to me, that's what kind of everything that we've done over the past 12 months and beyond has all been about. It's about how do we create a vision of a future that we really want and how do we bring that into fruition? Um, and it's been fantastic listening to everybody tonight.